how to follow up, follow up these three fascinating presentations. With conversations, of course, and we're now going to stage a panel discussion. So, for the first time today, but not the last, it's my pleasure to introduce Hilde Sonvik, our key moderator in today's panel conversations. Oh, Hilde is a renowned and respected journalist in the Nordic countries, and Nordic members of the audience will know her voice well from various radio programs. Hilde, over to you. Thank you very much, Ivan, and thanks for this possibility to really dive into some very intriguing topics of today and uh, for the future. And I'm so, I mean, I sit here together with one person sitting here physically with me, and Charsti Lökenstavrum, are you with us from Oslo? I'm absolutely joining you. Hi. From the grey and snowy Oslo. Nice to see you here. And uh, you can say hello to Anja Salzman, who is a PhD uh, now, <laughs> researcher, uh, both personally and professionally engaged in these topics. Uh, Anja, uh, you have been very much engaged in fighting surveillance capitalism. And I will ask both of you, first you, Anja, how did you, I mean, was it your professional part or your personal part listening in to these uh, three presentations? Mm -hmm. And are you now worried or are you intrigued? Uh, I think there's many questions at once. <laughs> um, I, so I have to make clear that I haven't uh, been activating against satellite journalism, but I think it's a fascinating example for, to think about uh, surveillance technologies and the role of technologies in general, that their um, ambiguative role in a way. Mm. So these are risky technologies which are, have on the one hand uh, a very big chance or possibilities for society. Um, on the other hand, of course, they um, introduce to new challenges, mm. you know, of power relations mm. and uh, as also Paul has mentioned in his discussion mm -hmm. or in his presentation uh, about uh, destructional effects or, uh, for example, yeah, new populations. Mm -hmm. So this is this is interesting. So, um, so of course, I, you mentioned I'm fighting surveillance capitalism <laughs> for being more concrete. Um, uh, it's uh, you know surveillance gets in this digital age more and more a kind of precondition. Mm. Uh, because in a way, if you see how these new technologies are working, mm. then it is in a way uh, uh, important that they get data. Mm. And it gets also, as you, the satellite technology shows, a new visibility. Mm. Uh, which on the one hand is a threat, and on the other hand, a very uh, uh, you chance mm. if you can see with climate change, for example, to mm. making abstract topics more uh, you know, understandable yeah. Yeah. and more close to people. Yeah. Also, because I was thinking both of you has worked, served as journalists, and Charsti, you are now a CEO of the Tinius Trust, but you also serve as president at Norski Pen, uh, fighting for, for freedom of speech, and you also chair now the work, your very important work uh, on Freedom of Speech Commission. And uh, who were you listening in? Uh, were, were you the president, uh, the journalist, uh, the organizer, or who, who of you three <laughs> ticked in here? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm mainly still and always the journalist. Uh, I think it's in my DNA. <laughs> yeah. But uh, and and it made me uh, uh, recapture my my own career because I started as a journalist putting a paper in the typewriter. Uh, and since then, I think all the uh, sort of technical and digital improvements have empowered journalism and access to information. Mm. Uh, maybe apart from the typewriter, uh, all of them have downsides. Yeah. Uh, but there are mainly upsides. And, and our challenge, of course, is to, to handle the, uh, the downsides. And that's why we also are very preoccupied with the negative parts of, uh, of innovations, that discussion is always on the negative part, but the, but the, the sort of the, um, the improvements, the upside is, is for everyone to, uh, to enjoy. And I think the three presentations here are mainly 
uh, about uh, empowering journalism. Mm. Uh, and, and just to remind us, I think uh, journalism's uh, imperative is to, to set a story in different angles. And of course, drones and uh, drones and satellites, they provide an angle that we didn't have before. Mm. We can tell stories uh, from another perspective, and we can bring in facts that we that we didn't have. One of the examples that wasn't mentioned, but that could have been mentioned uh, in the presentation, was of course the um, the extinction and the, uh, the the of the the villages of Rohingyas mm. in uh, Myanmar, uh, where where the, where the um, the Reuters journalists had access to to satellite uh, images that that showed that they that the villages were destroyed, and that was crucial information for the debate, for the realization what was going on in the, in Myanmar. Uh, so, um, yeah, I'm the, I'm the journalist, but but of course I I would love to to take part in the surveillance discussion as well. Uh, and, and of course, the, the both uh, funny and also informing mm. pictures uh, in um, oh, how we how we behave in the traffic is uh, is more is, is more troublesome. Mm. Uh, but but then we can talk a little bit about press mm. ethics also maybe. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but that, because I was now when I was watching. Uh, the pictures and listening into the, the to the presentations, I thought, are we now fully equipped? Do we understand pictures? Do we know enough to somehow to read the pictures right? What do you say, Anja? I think uh, I would uh, say the same as, as Paula said. I mean, especially with uh, regarding to the satellite journalism, I think it uh, needs a kind of knowledge and competence in order to read these pictures in the right way and to get a message, mm -hmm. I would take it. Because, as you said, there are many different uh, new angles. And, uh, I mean, these uh, are pictures. Um, so uh, there's a lot of uh, space for interpretation. Mm -hmm. And um, and I really agree there are big chances, chances for journalism, and especially also in, in, in terms of uh, climate discussions, for example, to make things visible which are people not aware about. Yeah. So there's a very big opportunities also to use these new technologies. Turo was talking about actually a, a study for satellite journalism. Is that a new thought? Should we think more about that, Chasti? Do we need that? <laughs> well, it um, the interesting thing about satellite journalism is that we are, very, we are dependent on deliverance from someone who we not really know very much. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't, we ha don't have control of the, uh, how the images are, uh, yeah, are brought to us. And, and I, also, I would also like to support the, the point of view that sometimes I look at these images and I read the, uh, the, the capture saying that this shows this and this, and I think, yeah. Okay, you okay that you, you tell say, me. but I yeah. cannot see. Yeah, it. yeah you tell me, uh, and uh, and uh, of course uh, uh, we should also hope for for technical improvements so it's easier to to interpret them uh, personally. But that also means that it's difficult for journalists to really know if mm. they are trustworthy, yeah. if they are uh, accurate, if they are what they really mm. sort of claim to be. It's one of, one of the, the questions we've gotten here on the slider, and I'm sitting here with the iPad because people can actually write in questions during the, the, these sessions. And uh, I, I know neither of you can answer, but it says something about what you're talking about now, Shasti. Uh, there is a person here writing, these images are examples up to including Uyghur detention camps. They are assumed quite far above ground and provide little details. Is that a tech limit? So you can already see that people are, you, you, we have presented here, but pictures, it, it presumably uh, are pictures from detention camps, but we won't know. Uh, and I don't know if any of you are experts on the tech limits here, uh, but that is also one of the questions that will come in when we sit there uh, in the media organizations about to interpret the pictures coming in, the streams. Uh, if it's a limit, it will improve. Yeah. So, so the time works pro it. Mm. Uh, 
Mm. And uh, and when it comes to the Uyghurs, I, I, that, that, those are images that I that I need to trust as a reader mm. uh, uh, to be what they claim to be. Uh, they are taken, at least those that I've seen, from from a very high distance, and they are not very specific. Mm. So so of course videos will improve that. So you can you can see. Um, you can see from where it's taken and zoom into it, I guess. But then I think we are more and more crushing into the privacy and surveillance part also. Mm. And, and the surveillance, you have been very engaged in that topic, Anja, mm. uh, both as a researcher and as a mother, mm -hmm. uh, fighting uh, the, the very heroic uh, fight <laughs> against uh, the Goliaths of this mm. industry. And uh, for me, I mean, as, as a normal person it's like it feels very dis discouraging because we see this everywhere and uh, mm -hmm. how can we as journalists and as citizens uh, uh, live with uh, and not be totally surveyed as you could see the video at the start of this uh, mm -hmm. um, session I mean journalists they have normally they have a codes of ethics they have a kind of ethical structures in place so I think yeah, it's, um, uh, in a way, uh, you can say, when we are confronted with these technologies, I mean, everybody needs a kind of, we need to talk more about morals and more about ethics. Mm. And that's something also I'm aware of, that we talk too much about technology, uh, although we, I think we need much more mm. uh, progress in our moral thinking, mm. and which includes the way how we adopt these technologies and mm. uh, that we can make, as for example, Zhuzhana Zubov calls it, make the digital our home. And I've been active because of uh, being part of this project and researching surveillance for many years and uh, thinking I'm a mother of three children. Mm. And uh, what I do see as this, these technological possibilities of surveillance not only change journalism, but also uh, challenge, co they contribute to m make, uh, commodify mm. uh, new, in new ways mm. things and uh, commercialize things that haven't been commercial on the market before. And that's, and especially if this comes into areas which before should be, for example, education and children, then uh, I think we need to be more sensible. Mm. So, and that's the reason why I have been uh, in public in order to engage a debate about that, mm. where what is right and uh, where to maybe uh, mm. uh, think of different ways of establishing digital infrastructures. Shasti, just shortly in, 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 to the end here, uh, where should this debate be going on right now, you think? The, the challenge is that, that we need to discuss uh, so many things uh, at the same time. Yeah. Uh, we need to understand the technology, we need to know what the algorithms do, we need, to, to, we need transparency. Uh, and, and also to find a good system for transparency. I don't think we're there yet. <laughs> uh, um, I think uh, the, we as customers, we, ne we need personally much more understanding on what, what we are really contributing to because this, is, this has become a very um, so, uh, shady tr uh, transaction. Mm. Uh, I, I, I provide something or all <laughs> of my personal life and I get, I get good digital tools mm. uh, back, but, uh, but I'm not really aware of what I'm giving away. Mm. Uh, and and I, I think um, uh, now we have this discussion on, on the, how the trust laws, uh, could we break up tech? Um, but I think we, we need to dive much more into to the customer mm. laws mm. To, to ensure that, uh, that we are empowered in the way that we're right to be empowered and enlightened also. Mm. But uh, in, and finally, I, I very much agree that, that ethics is extremely important. Mm. And, uh, but the, the challenge for the ethic part is that, as I know it, since I've been working with press ethics for many years, uh, uh, you need people that are really, uh, um, uh, that there is a grown-up person in the room. Mm. And, uh, and the problem is that it all, uh, very often isn't a grown-up mm. person in mm. the room. And, and when it comes to that ground, uh, ground surveillance, that your neighbor has a camera mm. uh, and, and he can post it on, on Twitter mm. <laughs> and, uh, and there you go. 
and and uh, so so it's uh, I think that we've not experienced any better times for information access of information and freedom of expression, but of course not more challenging times either. And that is something we will hear in the next session to come here. Thank you very much, Kerstin, and thank you, Anja. We will have a short break here for some minutes, 15 minutes, and then we will come back again and talking more into detail about freedom of expression and media as well. Thank you.